Good evening, Sanbunani Dumelang, and welcome to episode 116 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dungwa Kumalo. It's the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast, and I feel as though we are also uh, somewhat recovering from a uh, you know the long weekend, or perhaps even the pleasures of being in level one. We had a, a little technical glitch, uh, you know, starting the show, and I was saying to my guests that this is probably the the excitement of uh, you know the eased up restrictions and the long weekend that, of course, so many of us didn't have because we were working on Friday. Well, we are, of course, bringing you the latest edition of the Private Property Podcast, and we're also counting down to Private Property's first ever virtual property show. Certainly something that you don't want to miss out on. If you still haven't heard about it, then do get on our social media platforms. We're talking about it quite a lot. We have even posted details about it here. I'll be joining, uh, I'll be part of the lineup and emceeing one of the theaters on both Friday and Saturday. And we'll also have expert guests throughout the two days who will be helping us on our property journey, whether you're a property investor, whether you're a first time home buyer, you're a tenant, perhaps you're even a landlord, and there are certain property issues that you want answers to. We'll certainly have the right expert that you can, you know, ask those questions to. So do make sure that you sign up for the virtual property show. It is a free event. So it's certainly one of those things that you do not want to miss. Well, to get us started with this evening's conversation, uh, we're looking at if you are a first time home builder, because we talk about home buyers quite a lot, but I know there are probably uh, some of us who want to build our first homes. Well, we'll be exploring some, uh, you know, common design and building mistakes that you want to avoid. It's something that you definitely do not want to do. You know that we love giving you tips on mistakes that will either cost you time or cost you money that you want to avoid. And to help us you know, answer and get a sense of what are some of these mistakes that we do not want to make. Somebody who needs no introduction, we've had him before here on the Private Property Podcast, and that's Daniel Fanamadva, who's a director and a practitioner at Leaf Architects. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward to this discussion. So, you know, Daniel, I know that viewers at home are probably quite excited about building their first homes. And I think the first question I'll even ask viewers at home, if you've ever built before, you know, what was that experience like for you? Or perhaps you're maybe intimidated by it. I mean, I always say to to people, if you have a choice between buying and, and building for the first time, if you haven't done anything, first just buy and then kind of get the hang of things and then eventually start building. So we're not at that stage, Daniel, we definitely want to be building. Perhaps take us through the first thing that we should even be thinking about when we build. I think before we even get to the mistakes, because I know that you would have encountered so many uh, you know, different kinds of mistakes that uh, home builders tend to make uh, as they build their various homes. Uh, perhaps what should we be even thinking about or planning before we even you know, assign the contractor and start picking up all those gorgeous finishes because I think a lot of us probably you know think about the finishes and not the admin of the full project in its entirety. Yes you know I think one of the most exciting things that one can do is to reward yourselves and your family with a dream home. You know buying a home is all fine and well but it's never exactly 100% the way you want it so there'll always be a bit of a compromise because in effect what you're doing is you're buying somebody else's home. So building your own dream home is a fantastic opportunity to really create a space that really, really suits you, that really suits your lifestyle, that suits your family and all your other needs, uh, be it from a work or a social kind of viewpoint. So I think as it is exciting, I've heard so many horror stories as well. And I think what people need to do is, is that you need to cross your T's and dot your I's before. In other words, you need a plan. You need a plan of action. Action. You need a roadmap as to how you're going to go from the moment that you've decided that you want to build a home to the day that the keys are finally in your hand of your front door. And I would say it all boils down to research, research, research. And of course, it's also about relationships. So the first thing that I want to say is that people go to me and it overlaps a bit with what I said earlier on my previous podcast interview is that I think it's 
very important that you appoint an architect or a design professional to see you through the process, even if it is just to make sure that you're optimizing your site, that you're optimizing your lifestyle needs, your ambitions, that you come up with something which is thorough and that will fit your needs. I also think what one needs to keep in mind is, you know, the role of an architect or a design professional would be to guide you to make sure that the design potential is optimized. And that in a way, one could say adds value to the project. That in itself can be quantified in real financial terms. You know, it's so when I drive through the countryside, I see all this horrible, ugly homes. And I think, you know what, somebody has wasted bricks and mortar building this horrible looking building. And I'm sure that's not what they had in mind. You know, they wanted a beautiful place. <laughs> so you might as well get an expert, get a specialist in who is going to make sure that that is what you get. And uh, I think something else which I find very interesting is people always come to me and they've got this Pinterest flashy images. No, it's not about that. It's about the planning. It's the way that the space flows. It's the views. It's the way that you optimize sunlight. It's the way that you can create those indoor-outdoor connections between the house and the outdoor space. It's how do you maximize the potential. So I think that's very really important. And something else which I need to quickly mention is that people come with very specific needs. And they say, I need this and I need that and I need that. And then I would say to them, okay, but what would you need to be in five years time or in 10 years time? Maybe you'll grow older. Can you still climb stairs or steps? Um, maybe your mother-in-law, God forbid, but maybe your mother-in-law wants to move in with you. <laughs> or maybe you're planning on children, which means yeah. that you've got to make provision for that. So don't, don't come up with something, don't come up with ideas or needs of now. Plan for the future because this is your dream home. This is a long-term investment. This is an investment that will bring you quality of life it will bring you beautiful times beautiful moments it's the place where your kids will grow up it's a place where you it's your nest that is what it is um sorry you know Daniel as you were talking I think firstly a, a part of me was just thinking to myself uh I, I probably shouldn't bring you know architects to to my home because you'd probably be nitpicking uh you know a home because you're an architect as you're saying you drive around and you're seeing people's you know horrible and ugly homes I, I made a mental note uh don't bring <laughs> architects to your home they will nitpick um at your home <laughs> But I, I, and I like that you point out that so many of us, when we approach, you know, professionals, whether design professionals or even architects, we often do have that Pinterest, you know, board that we, we, we've made. And I know I'm guilty of that. I have all kinds of Pinterest boards, not just from, you know, the, the dream mansion that you want, but even the different rooms um, and the room ideas that you essentially have. And by the time you're kind of ready to start a conversation with somebody, you're like, here's my Pinterest board. This is what I want. Maybe take away that and put this in. So it's interesting to then hear the professional who's often at the receiving end of all our Pinterest boards um, and our creativity um, that you know you sometimes look at it and you think oh my goodness not not one of these situations again mm -hmm. so Daniel I mean you 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 were touching on how you've certainly come across a lot of you know horror stories when it comes to people's uh, you know, building their homes, perhaps share some of the common mistakes that you're, you're finding that we are making when we build our homes. I mean, you've already started touching on some of them that we're not properly thinking about um, the, the need that that home is going to serve and that it isn't just about, you know, if let's say you're 30 and you're building your home, perhaps in three years time, you might want to start having children, perhaps you want to live there for 10 or 20 years time. So you're not even thinking about um, it from that perspective, but instead you're just thinking, how is it going to look in the next, you know, eight months when that project is done? What are some of the common other mistakes that you're seeing that we typically tend to make when we're building um, our homes, especially as first time home buyers? 
I mean, home builders yes. rather. Yes. Well, well, as I said before, I think it's about designing around lifestyle and not about style, because you know, like. <laughs> Do you remember those Spanish homes of the 70s and the 80s? And now, now this Tuscan look is suddenly looking very dated. So, so that's what I mean when people come with, with images. You know, you've got to plan something that's timeless. It's more about accommodating your space and your needs really than about a style. The style will come naturally, so to say, out of the, out of the planning, out of the needs, the way that it orientates and all of that. I think one of the most common mistakes people make is that they are very overambitious uh, in that they want everything to be as big as possible. I, my, my advice would be rather go smaller, small is beautiful, and rather spend that money on better finishes, on the quality of the spaces than having this enormous home which really doesn't suit your needs and which really will not do justice to the quality of your life. So, so that's the first thing that I would like to say is rather scale down your ambitions, rather scale down and spend more money in terms of the quality of the finishes and the spaces than go for as big as possible. Um, I also think, again, coming back to why you need a design professional is that you need a very good set of plans as the end result of that process with your design professional. You need a set of drawings which shows every bit of detail, which shows the electrical layout, because that is the roadmap. That is the map which the contractor is going to use. And that is going to avoid a lot of costly um, mistakes and a lot of maybe unexpected changes, which of course can see your budget escalate. So make sure that you've got a very good set of specifications, that you've got the electrical layouts, that all the plans are properly dimensioned, that you've done your soil tests, that your structural engineer is on board if you need one, and that you can use that even maybe to generate a basic bill of quantities, because Nowadays, with our software as design professionals, we can generate a basic bill of quantities, which means the material quantities is given to the contractor with a set of plans, which allows them to cost accurately. So there are no unknowns where they've got to allow for, well, maybe I better cover myself, I should rather cost this a little bit more. No, that is the most important. When you go out into the costing process, into the tender process, then you need a thorough set of plans. In fact, maybe during the initial design phase, you can already get some very basic tentative costings to say, am I in my ball mark? Because remember, you've got a budget, you have to stick into your budget, and you have to be conservative with your budget. You must always allow 10 to 15% for unexpected costs. You don't know what's going to happen. There could be all kinds of, there could be an interest rate change. There could be something that's going to change along the way. And you've got a budget for those unexpected issues as well. And, and I, I think, think Daniel, um, to, to interrupt you, because I wanted to go for a quick break. I think on the issue of budget, it's actually such a big one because and, and, and if anything, I like that you even, you know, advising us that you, you want to, from a very early stage, even get that relative ballpoint figure. Because as you're saying, sometimes people are over ambitious, want, you know, big things, and you don't get a sense of just how um, costly some of those things are. I mean, I've seen there's a, there's a building project that I'm, I'm doing right now. And one of the things that I'm even noticing is that, you know, costs as restrictions have kind of eased in the past couple of months have actually gone up with some of the service providers that I've used in the past. So you're almost seeing a, um, you know, in, in some instances, a 10, 12% increase in literally the same kinds of material that I had bought, uh, you know, pre-lockdown or in the early stages of lockdown. So it's actually been um, slightly discouraging. We also just have to rework your numbers slightly. But as you're saying, the moment you 
anticipate even that 10, 15%, uh, you know, um, almost room for the, the budget to slightly go up, then you're you know, mostly adequately prepared for those increases because that is something that we are seeing right now. Daniel, I want us to go for a quick break and when we come back, we'll be taking questions and comments from viewers at home, but we're also going to be exploring you know, some of the other mistakes that we're making because I think this is that time where people are debating whether they should maybe buy, you know, buy land and build to your specifications as you're saying that the moment you build your own home, it really is something that you've built for yourself, as opposed to having to settle um, into somebody else's idea of the kind of home that they wanted. And I think as, as people who perhaps have building ambitions, there are certain things that we definitely want to avoid. And if you've ever built at home, I also want to hear from you, you know, what was that building experience like? I think one of the things that I always say is, Oftentimes when couples build their home, it's either it's going to bring them, you know, close together or it's going to have them wanting to file for divorce because there are so many things that, uh, you know, the wife might want or the husband might want or the one partner might want. And oftentimes it, it really can be that thing where you're just like, how did I even marry you? Um, and, and I've seen it happen. Uh, myself. So we're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be taking your questions and comments, but also do share with us your building experience. If you did it alone, how was the experience? And if you did it with the partner, did it bring you closer or separate you? You know, because I think it is one of those things that could do that. We're going to go for a quick break. And when we come back, I'll still be in conversation with Daniel. We'll be back just after this. Welcome back to episode 116 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantu Kumalo. It's the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast. We do hope that you've had a great weekend, you're well rested, and of course, ready to talk about property. This evening, we're asking, are you a first time home builder? Well, here are some common design and building mistakes that you want to avoid. We're certainly taking your questions and comments at home. I also want to know if you've built before, how was that experience? like what are some of the lessons that you've learned when it comes to building your home i think this is one of those things that sometimes people get very intimidated by but some of people i think are actually up for the challenge uh we've got a question here from one of our regular viewers uh Martha Shingange, who asks i have a, a, a i'm going to sneak this one in which one is cost effective between building and buying So Daniel, which one would you say is the more cost-effective option between building and buying? You know, it's a bit it's a bit of a loaded question because it's a bit like saying, um, would a pair of blue shoes cost more than a pair of black shoes? If you look at the cost of building per square meter, and you look at the cost of buying a home, like an existing home or a second-hand home, the second-hand home would be cheaper than building. But remember that if you build, you can do it in such a way that it's design effective and therefore cost effective. Mm -hmm. You don't end up somebody else's mistakes or somebody else, else's dead spaces. And inevitably, most homes, people will spend money in renovating it or fixing it up or changing it, which you also need to factor in. So yeah, on, on a basic calculation level, to buy a property is cheaper than to build one, but it is not as straightforward as that. And, and, and you know, Dan, I actually hadn't even thought of how oftentimes when you do buy a home, 
um, you also make certain changes yourself, right? And obviously those changes cost you money. So you almost right. want to look at it from, so the purchase price is X amount. If there are any changes that you're going to make, what is the, you know, the figure? And then how do you look at it? Um, and also, I mean, as you're saying, you can't sometimes put a monetary value to building a home to your specs. So you can't say, because here I kind of, you know, conceded that I am, and going to end up with a home that looks like X, whereas perhaps if I was building it from scratch, uh, I would have done you know this differently. You can't really put a price tag on on that kind of having to kind of settle for um, you know somebody else's design. Um, we've got another question that's also relating to finances. I, I, I think one of the things with building, uh, Daniel, and I know I, I tend to stress about it often, is of course around costs. Because when you want to sometimes whether build a home from scratch or even build you know, additional dwellings in your home, cost is always one of those things that you think through um, quite a bit. We've got a question here from Mama Hawu Mudawung um, who asks, I'm planning to build a two bedroom house inside my yard for renting purpose. What are the cost implications between taking a personal loan and taking a loan on my bond? Yeah, well, obviously at this stage, the interest rates are at a record low. So taking um, from your loan, if you could access that funding, um, if you've got a flexi bond is much cheaper um, then it would be to take a personal loan. So I would advise people to go for a, for a home loan um, or to access the existing home loan if possible, because that at the moment is the cheapest form of finance that you can find, definitely. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think the other big thing is to just run the numbers, right? Because you almost want to see if you're getting a personal loan, oftentimes, you know, the interest rates on, on unsecured lending are substantially higher than on your home loan. So you almost want to run the, the figures and do the exercise of figuring out how much interest will you then be paying in the event where you were to get that um, home loan. Another question uh, here, um, Daniel, which, which I, I can already almost anticipate what you're going to say, because it's something that you've touched on. And this one is coming from Ivan Nzovu. He's saying, I'm currently planning to build, and it's very stressful, especially when you have to apply for water, electricity, and sanitation connection, together with municipal approvals. Um, what's the easiest way to build? The easiest way to build is to get a design professional who can assist you or to get a project manager. The biggest mistake that people can make is to think that they can build themselves um, uh, to play main contractor. Um, I think there, there's a lot of pitfalls with that. Besides the frustration factors, you also have to factor in that you are not a building professional, you don't know what to expect, the stress and the time that you're gonna to have to take off work and spend in terms of your own life is simply not worth it because you also cannot guarantee the end uh, process and the end product. So my, 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 my plea to the listeners would be, please get a reputable builder. Do your homework, get several quotes, get builders with good references, check out those references, go to building sites where they're currently busy building. You can very quickly pick up, is this builder, is he organized, is the big place looking like a big sty? Uh, what are the subcontractors saying? What are the plumbers saying? Are they happy, do, they, do the workers look happy? Or what is the state of that building site? So. Do your homework when appointing a builder. That is a very important decision that you're going to make because it's about building a relationship with somebody who is going to actually construct your, your home. And, and I think, Daniel, the other thing that we probably take for granted is when you think of building your home, you simply cannot DIY it. I mean, there are certain things around the home itself that you're able to you know, DIY, but when it comes to the 
the project of building your home. You simply cannot. As you say, you're not a professional. You also don't know what you don't know. I mean, I can already, you know, sense Ivan's stress because you're having to do all these municipal checks and make sure that, you know, you, as, as you've advised, that you want to dot your I's and cross your T's, but you also don't know how many I's need to be dotted and how many T's are there. So having a professional do it uh, ensures that all the necessary groundwork is done. And, and, and I think that is one of the things that we probably take for granted. Before we wrap up, you know, uh, Daniel, any last, um, I'll say for par that we should be avoiding completely when it comes to building our first home? Because as I can imagine, people are looking at even different ways of perhaps maximizing the current um, yard that they have where they might be able to, you know, put an additional dwelling so that they're able to um, make an additional income off of that, or perhaps just building their complete home from scratch. So any other last tip that you think, listen, do not make this mistake. It can be so costly. Um, as you're saying, rather get a professional instead. Well, the other thing is that people sometimes go and they accept a quote, only a quote, and sign a quote. Make sure that you sign a proper contract, get a proper contract. You can get it from the JBCC contracts. Uh, you can get, there are many contracts available, but sign a decent, a proper contract where you have read all the small print. That is very important. Don't just sign on the basis of a quotation. That is not a contract. The quotation and the plans should be addendums to the contract. So those then become all part of the legal process. So make sure your legal process is in place. The other thing that I want to say is that where you can save money, I'm giving them a bit of tip here, is if you know that you're going to start building Maybe go out and have a look. Sometimes uh, bathroom accessory places, tile places have got fantastic sales on. I renovated my own home where I went and I made sure I checked out the sales and I managed to get some items at 20, 30, even 40% discount. So you can start looking at those accessories and maybe buy them in advance. I also think that what you must do is be patient. Don't rush the builder. It's, you don't want a rush job. So be patient with the builder. It's in the builder's interest to build the place in a short time because time is money. So don't rush the builder. Don't say to him, I want this done and then sitting on his case. I also think it's quite important to, if you don't have any subcontractors that you've had experience with in the past, to go with the main contractor's subcontractors because they are going to look to him for future work so they will make sure that the quality of their work of their plumbing of their electrical work of their tiling work will be good because it's not just a one-off if you're going to get somebody from the street who's going to do tiling for you they don't care this is a one-off job and if the job is a mess they don't care because they can move on from there and then the last thing I want to say is don't cut corners with certain things. Don't cut corners with the quality of your roof, your roof finishes. Don't cut, uh, cut corners with the quality of your windows. Those things that matter. If you don't have money, you could always put in a proper floor or a proper tile or any of those beautiful lights later. But the fundamentals, don't cut corners with. That is... Um, something which you can't go back and rectify later. And, and, and it's actually such a great note to, to end on, Daniel, because oftentimes we underestimate how the, the finishes cost so much money. And oftentimes that's actually what a lot of us tend to you know, focus on because that's what people see. But you, of course you want the work that's underneath those finishes to be done in a reliable way. And uh, you want to make sure that you, know, you didn't cut those corners. If, and if anything, if you want to save money, as you were saying, you probably want to you know, look out for those various specials for the different finishes and take your time with them. I think one of the big tips that I always share, even with my own friends, when it comes to our own properties is you don't need to rush, whether even when you're doing, for example, a home renovation and you want to renovate your whole house, you can take it 
you know, room per room and budget accordingly. And once you're done with a particular room, you move on to the next, as opposed to pressuring yourself to doing the whole thing at once um, and needing that huge sum of money to, you know, complete a whole house. So I think pace yourself. It's okay if you're only doing it in stages. Um, you're not in a rush. It's, it's a marathon. It doesn't have to be a sprint. And as Daniel's, you know, keeps saying to us is, work with a professional. I mean, he said it in the last time he was here with us. I know that should we invite him again, he's going to keep uh, you know, reminding us that you want to work with a design professional because they know how to best optimize your space. They know how to optimize your budget and they're professional. You want to make sure that you're not just doing something haphazardly and in the event where there's you know, anything wrong, you don't have somebody to follow up with adequately. Daniel, we are going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And that is Daniel van Amerva, who is a director and a practitioner at Leaf Architects. And that, of course, brings us to the end of the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast. It has been a pleasure being with you this evening. And of course, we're back again tomorrow evening. And I think one of the things that I'm going to keep talking about this week is, of course, the virtual property show. Make sure that you sign up. We have shared those details down here below. You simply do not want to miss uh, that particular show. If you have any questions around, uh, you know, building, building, even around being a landlord, different ways to manage your tenants, buying your first home, managing your Airbnb, uh, you know, portfolio. We, we, you saw was speaking to Robin Booth last week. He's also going to be part of the lineup. Those are some of the people that you can certainly expect. So some of the expert guests that we've had right here on the Private Property Podcast will also be part of the virtual property show. So you do not want to miss it, miss it. It is free of charge. So make sure that you sign up and we'll be with you this Friday and Saturday for the virtual property show. Well, that's it from me, Zamantunga Kumala. I'm back in your screens tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. And as usual, hoping you stay home and staying safe for you to succeed as an aspiring or growing property investor in south africa in this market you need five things number one you need local and practical knowledge number two you need a team around you number three you need access to the tools that the professionals use at a fraction of the price number four you need a collaboration platform and number five you gotta have the willingness and the readiness readiness to take action. So my name is Carlo Mariani. I'm the founder of The Property Coach and the chief hacker of The Property Hacked Club. So come and join me at the Virtual Property Show by Private Property for two days of very powerful knowledge. And I will see you at the booth. I've got a great free offer for you. Or join me for one of the master classes where I will share with you how to choose the right investment area for you. Ciao from Carlo, chief hacker of the Property Hacked Club. Take action because nothing works unless you do. Hey everyone, my name is Adrian. I'm the CEO of Remax of Southern Africa. Uh, I look forward to seeing some of you at the virtual private property property show on the 2nd and the 3rd of October. It's free of charge. I'm going to be doing, covering two topics. Uh, the one is how to stand out in a sea of vanilla. It's called Be Remarkable. So I hope to catch you there. And the second talk is about the things to look out for when buying a home. So first time buyers or even repeat buyers, hopefully I can share with you some tips and techniques and what to look for. So hope to catch you there. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Now this is a good decision you have made to buy a property, but what defects did you miss that could cost a fortune? You should engage me as an experienced property inspector to point out the good, the bad and the ugly of your new property. This will take the guesswork and doubt out of the transaction and you will confidently make an informed decision. My name is Marisha Robus, owner of Gauteng Property Inspections a Nabisa Certified Master Inspector and ITC Certified Roof Inspector. Join me on Friday at quarter past five to learn what the three things are you must always inspect before buying a house. And on Saturday at quarter past three to learn what the four simple maintenance tasks are that will save you money. Come join us for two days of live property education free of charge at the Virtual Property Show brought to you by Private Property on the 2nd and 3rd of October. 
This event is free of charge to the public with limited space available. So register now on the private property website. Are you looking to buy your very first property? It could be your first home or it could be an investment property, but you're not quite sure how to go about it, or you may be a bit nervous about getting into the South African property market right now. My name is Andrew Walker, and, I'll, and I will be representing the SA Property Investors Network, as well as the Property Academy on the 2nd and 3rd of October at South Africa's largest property show. It's the virtual property show hosted by private property, and you don't want to miss out. You see, I've attended all of their uh, property shows and it's a great platform to start learning and networking with, with like-minded south africans people on the same boats as yourself and the great thing is is that it's a free event on the 2nd and 3rd of october just click the link and book your seat you can expect to learn from a whole range of south africa's top leading experts i will be talking about flipping properties in this market below a million what should you be thinking about if you want to flip properties and make a profit there'll be in the, there'll be other speakers talking about if you just want to buy your first home your first property what do you need to think about what does that checklist look like so if you're interested in the in property in south africa now is the time to join us this week the 2nd and 3rd of October at the Virtual Property Show hosted by Private Property and we will see you there. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this weekend is the Virtual Property Show. Such a great event for you to learn about property and how you can invest in property and build wealth and financial freedom through property. I am Jakob Grobla, the founder and CEO of Prosperity Enterprises, and I'm doing two sessions at the Virtual Property Show. I will be speaking on three ways how you can pay less tax with property. And then I will also be speaking on whether you should buy property in your own name, in a company, or in a trust. I'm very excited to have you there. If you have not registered yet, remember to register with private property. Thank you very much. When I share with people that they can live in a beach house Cape Town property for free, they don't believe me. When I share with them that they can rent an apartment from a landlord and sublet it on Airbnb such that they generate extra income for travel, education, increased affordability, they often don't believe me. My name is Robin Booth, the winner of the 2018 Investor of the Year Award and this weekend on the 2nd and 3rd of October I will be sharing with you my story of how you too can use Airbnb to generate income and of course increase your property portfolio. The virtual property show hosted by Private Property is this weekend. It is free for you to register. Look at the link below and I look forward to sharing my story with you such that you see that you can do it too. How do you deliver maximum value to your clients and stand out above the rest? Why must a landlord use your services instead of your competitors? Knowing what is happening in the market and what trends to expect in the future is key to adding value. I'm Yuhet Smuts, Head of Data and Analytics at Paypal South Africa. Come join us for two days of live property education at the Virtual Property Show on the 2nd and 3rd of October, brought to you by Private Property. I'll be updating you on what the rental landscape looks like six months into lockdown, how rental growth and arrears were affected, and what trends you can expect to see going forward. This event is free of charge to the public with limited space available, so register now on the private property website to avoid disappointment. You can find the link in the caption. I look forward to seeing you there. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Shilu Boy Mutiwa. I'm the Executive Director at Intergen. I'm inviting you for this year virtual property show brought to you by Private Property. Come join us this Friday and Saturday the 2nd and the 3rd of October where we will be assisting you as a property investor on how to best structure your investment property portfolio. We specialize in fiduciary services that includes trust, wills, disease estate and estate planning. Come join us 
with our team of professionals who are ready to assist you. Be mindful that though the, the property show is free of charge, the space is limited. You might want to go and visit the property website and click on the link and register as soon as possible. I'm looking forward to engage with you, the rest of my team. See you this Friday and Saturday. Cheers. Hi, I'm Brian Kepper. I'm a 10 times South African motorcycling champion. My family and I have chosen to live in four ways. There's some really great suburbs in our neighborhood. There's a lot of families living in the surrounding areas in places like Lone Hill and Cedar Lakes. What draws people to Cedar Lakes is that it's so close to Broadacre Shopping Centre, Cedar Square and Four Ways Life Hospital. Lone Hill is a major draw card for many families. It's got some great smaller commercial centres and some fantastic schools like Crawford College. From an entertainment point of view, Monte Cassino really comes alive at night. There's so much on the go, and there's an incredible energy in the area. Our family just loves the fast-paced lifestyle that Four Ways brings. But honestly, the thing that attracted us most to this area was the active lifestyle that it offers. As a family, we've chosen to live in Four Ways because of the lifestyle and convenience, and this is our neighborhood.